Hello, welcome to Statics. I'm Dr. Stewart. Today we're going to do an example for shear and bending moment diagrams. Our example comes from 7.6 of Hibbler's Statics book. In this example, we're asked to draw the shear and moment diagrams for the given figure. Let's analyze the figure. This figure has a five kilonewton load applied to the center of it. We are also given dimensional information that tells us where the key points are located. If we look at the supports, we can see that we are supported both at A and at C by a uh, uh, some kind of maybe uh, thrust bearing or, or a bearing uh, type of support, right? And this is a 2D problem. Let's go ahead and take this information and craft our free body diagrams in our knowns and unknowns. Our free body diagram is where we free the body from those constraints at A and C, replacing the constraints with the reactions, a reaction AY and a reaction CY, right? Then we can put our dimensions, we can put our external loads, and we've got a pretty nice looking free body diagram. Let's also put that information here in our knowns and unknowns. Uh, we, we, our unknowns here are AY and CY, as well as the, the shear and moment diagrams. If we take this very simple free body diagram and apply our equations of equilibrium and note the symmetry, the symmetric loading and geometry of the body, we'll find that AY and CY are equal to 2.5 kilonewtons. It only makes sense. All right. So now we need to draw, or we need to start to do the steps to drawing our shear and moment diagrams. To do that, in, in this section, we use the method of sections, where we take our free body diagram and we cut it up with sections wherever we encounter external or major external loads or changes in state. In this example, the only thing as we move along the beam that we encounter is that five kilonewton load. So we need to do a section before the five kilonewtons and we need to do a section, call this section two, after the five kilonewton load. In order to create our, our diagrams, we're going to want to be able to craft equations. So that means when we do these sections, we're not going to section at an exact distance. Instead, we are going to section at some variable distance x. All right. So let's do that, starting with section 1. For section 1, we are going to cut, we're going to cut our body somewhere in between 0 and 2 meters, right? And that cut that we take is going to be at a distance of x, that variable distance. When we do that, when we create that section, we're going to expose internal forces, a shear force, and internal moments, a moment, bending moment, right? And we also have our known AY, the support, at, at point A. So looking at this diagram, we've got it well constructed. We have everything that we know are unknowns. And the only special thing that we did was that we made this a variable distance X. Let's go ahead and take this diagram and create equations of equilibrium. We'll sum the forces in the Y direction. That'll allow us to find that VX, the shear force, is equal to 2.5 kilonewtons. And then when we do the sum of the moments about point A, we're going to find something interesting. We're going to find that that equation is equal to the bending moment minus uh, V, which is our shear force, times X, where X is a variable, right? So that means that our bending moment is equal to 2.5 times x kilonewtons times meters. So our bending moment is going to change as we move in the x direction. As x changes, 
it changes. This is going to be useful because this is an equation. It's a linear equation that we can plot in a moment diagram. All right. So we did our first section. And that section encompasses pretty much everything from here all the way to just to the left of the five kilonewton load. Now we need to do a section that encompasses everything from just to the right of the five kilonewton load all the way to the end of our member. So from, though, from that distance to that distance. So let's make a section that has that variable distance, again, using a variable distance x, and let's find how the shear forces v and the moments m evolve over that, over that distance. So let's make the, first, the second section. The second section is a little bit more complicated, right? We're going from point B, which is just to the left of the, oh, excuse me, there we go, which is just to the left of the five kilonewton load, and we're supposed to encompass all the way to C. So we've got to kind of figure out the dimensions a little bit here. Let's start with the easy part. From point A to B, we know that distance is two meters. It's fixed, right? From our diagram, it's two meter distance here. We also can just describe wherever our variable distance is alone as x. That, that full distance from A to wherever we are is x, right? So finally, we need to find the remainder, the remnant that's in between those two. And that would simply be the full distance of x minus 2 is going to give us the, the interval in between, that, that, that rem, the remnant between b and our, and our variable point, right? Okay, clean this up a little bit. So now we have our free body diagram. We've got our known Ay, we've got the known five kilonewtons. We have exposed our internal shear forces and moments, right? And everything is described using a variable distance x. We've got a good free body diagram. Let's take that diagram and create equations of equilibrium. We can start with the sum of the forces in the y direction. We create that equation. We can solve and we'll find that the shear force is a constant value. It's equal to negative 2.5 kilonewtons. All right. We then can do the sum of the moments. And here we'll sum the moments at, at the variable point, right? At our variable, they were going to sum the moments here at this variable distance. And from that, if we rearrange and solve, or, or, or actually, let's go, have, go, go through that process of doing the moments about this point here, right? So the first term we have is the moment, right? M. But then we're going to say plus, and we're going to see what's going to cause a, 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 a bending moment. The first thing we encounter moving away from our point is this five kilonewtons. It is going to cause a uh, counterclockwise sense of rotation, and its moment arm is this distance here. So we're going to do plus five kilonewtons times x minus two meters, right? And then we're going to move further along the beam. We'll see that we encounter this Ay it causes a clockwise sense of rotation, and it's at the full distance of x. So we're going to give it a negative, because it's clockwise, a y times x. And then we're going to set this whole thing equal to 0. Set this whole equation equal to 0, right? OK. Once we've done that, we can rearrange and solve for the value of m, and we'll see that m again, is an equation where m is equal to 10 minus 2.5 times x in units of kilonewtons times meters. Now, this equation, this is a linear equation, right? Think of y is equal to mx plus b. y is equal to a slope times x plus an intercept. Well, what is our slope? 
negative 2.5. What is our intercept on the y-axis? It's 10, right? So this is going to help us to create the diagrams uh, uh, using these equations we found. So now we've evaluated both sections and they encompass the full length of the beam. It's time to create our diagrams. Let's start with just a diagram that represents the free body diagram with the, with the forces in place, with the actual values of our um, reactions in place. Let's then, lining it up as best as possible, below it create a shear force diagram where we plot the value of the shear force as a function of distance, right? We've evaluated the shear force by doing sections. If we go back in our first section, we found that the shear force is a constant value over the interval from zero to B. It's a constant value of 2.5 kilonewtons. So when we start our beam, we are going to say its value is, is, it starts at zero, it goes up to 2.5, and it's held all the way to B at that constant value, right? The next thing that we encounter, if we look at our free body diagram here is a five kilonewton shear force and it's going down. So obviously, once we move past this point B, we're gonna drop, we're gonna uh, have a step change down by five kilonewtons of shear force. And then from B to C, we should be at a value of negative 2.5 kilonewtons. Well, let's look at our second section. What does it tell us? Our second section tells us that the shear force is equal to negative 2.5 kilonewtons. That's right. That means that we've done this properly. The five kilonewtons, we stepped down by five, and now we're at negative 2.5 kilonewtons. It's perfect. It makes sense, right? And then when we get to the end of our beam, what do we encounter in our free body diagram? we encounter a positive force of 2.5 kilonewtons. So we go from that negative value and we return back to zero. So a, a great way for us to, to check to see if our free body diagram, I mean, if, our, um, if we've crafted this shear force diagram correctly is we should start at zero and we should end at zero. Simple as that. If we're doing that, hey, our diagram is properly constructed. All right. So now let's do the moment diagram. We're going to try to create that diagram directly below the shear force diagram. All right. The moment diagram, we're going to craft, again, from our equations of equilibrium. In our first section, what did we find the moment to be? Uh, we found that the moment is an equation, and the equation is 2.5 times x, where x is our distance. So the moment is, a, is linearly increasing at a slope of 2.5, right? So let's go to the diagram, and let's plot that equation, where we're starting at 0, and we're plotting 2.5x going up at that rate until we get to point B. Right? All right. At point B, we don't counter, we don't encounter any coupled moments or anything. So we'll move right into the equation for our second section. In section two, we found that our moment equation is equal to this linear equation that has an intercept. So it's 10 minus 2.5 times x, where minus 2.5 is the slope and 10 is the y-intercept. So let's take that equation and let's go ahead and plot it into our diagram. And when we do, we put that negative 2.5 slope, our intercept, intercept is 10, and now we've drawn the second part of our moment diagram. All right, 
Now, how do we know if our moment diagram is correct? Well, we started at zero and our diagram ends at zero. So that indicates that it, it seems like we did this process correctly, right? Now, this problem is a simple problem where we're only doing two sections. We only have one externally applied load. But as we move forward, we could get problems that have more externally applied loads, more complicated loads, distributed loads, coupled moments, so on and so forth right? So it's important for us to have the core skill sets down. How do we do a section? How do we create a free body diagram? And how do we craft equations of equilibrium from that diagram? Get some practice, and we're going to do another example in the next video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell. I'll see you later.